Who battle? Uh, Alrighty, welcome to part 10 of the Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back playthrough. We are now in the final world of the game. Oh, phone call for you, Crash. <laughs> it's the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I messed up. I only killed 33 people. How many were you supposed to kill? 100. Oh. You're a very poor uh, genocidal maniac. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck these levels. Oh, these You're a bribe. Yeah, have you guys ready for a vehicle riding level? <laughs> I'm going to smash ride. Oh boy. Stupid jetpack time. So yeah, these levels don't have any alternate exits or anything. It's just cr trying to get all the boxes is a pain because uh, the the entire jetpack is, uh, auto, is uh, manual control. So you have to worry about your positioning, I've your murdered. your forward positioning, your backward. So it's a little awkward. Um, the D-pad controls uh, your position on screen, the top, uh, bottom, left or right. And then the triggers uh, control your forward movement and your reverse movement. Huh. <laughs> yep. Meta Knight, no, why did you kill oh. me? There are I, I there are many a time where I get confused, like oh I should move forward hits the up button. <laughs> <laughs> I should move forward, go hit the ceiling. <laughs> Did I win? I don't think I won. I got third. I I can really imagine positioning yourself to be kind of difficult as well because of the weird like depth to it. And like how the camera yeah. kind of moves depending on where you're located on the screen. Yeah, that too. Yeah, there's a lot of awkwardness when it comes to like moving yourself. It'd be, I think, it would have worked a little better if the jetpack control were automatic, so you'd only have to like oh, worry. You, about you, you'd have to worry about where you're positioned. Uh huh. Damn it. <laughs> oh, now I'm back here. It's, it's great. Yeah, and the very like the forward and reverse are very touchy too. I'm trying so hard not to hit. Also, doesn't help that it's like like his his movement is just like super slow generally as well. Yeah. Do you think Kirby could beat Homelander? <laughs> um, he can become Homelander. <laughs> Do you think the little pink puffball that on the regular kills Elder Gods could beat one off brand Superman? <laughs> yes. But could he be Goku? <laughs> Probably at this point, honestly. <laughs> Kirby lore goes hard for no fucking reason. <laughs> Kirby lore is insane. <laughs> like I said, Kirby beats Elder Gods on the regular. I know. <laughs> kind of, kind of, literally eats them for breakfast. Yes. <laughs> and Goku hasn't beaten a single god. At least not one of significance. So who am I supposed well, to win as? Become a in? god. <laughs> I mean, if you count Dende, he could beat the shit out of Dende. <laughs> yeah, Goku hates children. <laughs> Just like oh, what he did with Gohan. He could probably also beat King Kai. 
So who am I supposed to play as if I want the most lore accurate uh, sparkling zero round? <laughs> <laughs> thing about sparking zero is you don't have to be lore accurate <laughs> honestly if you were to play as ui goku you would probably win a lot of time because people don't know how to deal with this gimmick <laughs> <laughs> but from what i've heard if you pick ui goku you can only be ui goku you cannot have a team you can only be goku yeah, they, you, you, well, yeah, that, yeah, because uh, so because like in online play, you have, or I think you you can also do it in other modes too. But there's like a, you, you know, you know those things where it's like, you, like, like you have twenty five dollars, you have to put a team together. Who are you putting in? So it's it like Sparking Zero kind of works like that. Like certain characters are worth certain amounts of points, and you only have like fifteen points to put together your team. So like you could only have like one or two really good characters, or you could have a bunch of weaker characters. You can have mm, the entire junior force. <laughs> yeah, they they had to they had to kind of they had to really kind of squeeze the numbers so you can fit the entire Ginyu force on one team. <laughs> uh, I I did see in a video that um, all the Ginyu members start out with sparking. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, and apparently Majin Vegeta's sparking. He doesn't get staggered. Huh. And okay. he can stagger great apes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, depending on depending on like how powerful like kind of canonically your character is will depend on how easily you stagger giant characters and characters with super armor. Yeah, uh, from the video I watched, you have to be at least like Super Saiyan three at level one. Yeah, I mean that that's how it was in previous Tenkaichi's. I think the rules have changed slightly with Sparking Zero, but but they're still pretty similar. Either way, Majin Vegeta can get staggered and can stagger giants. Mm. With normal attacks. I'm shocky boy. And without a doubt, I need to light a tree on fire. <laughs> <laughs> POV Wispy Woods. That's what I'm fighting. <laughs> Not poor tree. This is trying to Wispy Woods EX. Huh. Oh god, I've been swallowed. I've been vored. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hang on. I thought being swallowed was a good thing. Oh. I missed instance. I don't know how I slipped through there, but okay. Yeah, that was that was a pretty tight squeeze. <laughs> These levels suck. They, there are only two in the game, and they suck. <laughs> Ow! Now get in the incinerator. I am the incinerator. <laughs> Well, that goes unnecessarily hard. I'm wearing a dark Meta Knight mask, and I just lit myself on fire. It looked unnecessarily cool. <laughs> oh, damn it. Yeah, you have to wait for the timing on these uh, enemies because they have like the sparkling hands. Yeah, get electrocuted. That's not good. <laughs> you can't even really see it uh, in this version because colors are more. Uh, well, they're more uh, PS4 like. <laughs> That's all I can really <laughs> say. Um. I will say, like, colors were a lot more vibrant on the PS1, but this is still vibrant enough. You just, for some reason, can't see the lightning between their hands. It's also because, like, the PS1 games, like, uh, that was, like, the... That era was, like, gaming's first attempt of, like, lighting engines, and so a lot of things mm -hmm. were really dark, and then 
uh, a lot of things were really dark when sometime when they needed to be sometimes and then like sometimes other times they're like extremely bright just for the sake of popping out <laughs> uh <laughs> The Ensane trilogy, I think, has more realistic lighting. Die. Oh. <laughs> No, go down. Go down. There you go. <laughs> Fucking brain. <laughs> because I'm so used to in games just like, if you're like floating and like flying or stuff like this, um, to control up or down, you use the triggers. <laughs> Like if you're flying a helicopter in GTA, um, yeah. to go up and down, yeah, you'd be using the triggers. <laughs> But not in Crash. They never got the memo. <laughs> <laughs> he just wanted to be different. <laughs> like what the fucking Minecraft movie is doing. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. Because wasn't that the... This is why they're doing it live action. Yeah, there, there was there was some there was something during like a Minecraft live where the they were like talking to like some of the people like working on like maybe people working on the movie and stuff, and they basically even talked about like yeah, people have done some you know you know they told really good stories and stuff you know doing like their own kinds of like Minecraft movies, and so literally they're basically saying the only reason why their Minecraft movie is live action is because they wanted to do something different. <laughs> uh huh. I totally <laughs> raise your hand if you buy that. <laughs> hmm, strange. Why is no one raising their hand? It's actually kind of like funny too because there was some like fan made, uh, like Minecraft ish kind of movie that was that actually was sort of like a live action one, and like I guess it, like it was a bit like a lot more kind of well. I don't. I've never seen it myself. So I don't know what exactly it was like, but I guess it was actually pretty well <laughs> received. And so then when the whole news with like the actual official Minecraft movie coming out, I guess that old one got taken down. <laughs> what really? Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want it to be different and get rid of every other competition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, you're not allowed to see anyone else uh, to do our idea. <laughs> <laughs> what are they, Nintendo? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? What? What am I doing? Either of you play that A Quiet Place game? Oh, is that the one nice where you game. have to, like, you have to, add, like, they, like, it's a horror game, but if, if you, like, talk too, or scream too loudly, you, like, fail? No. It's or, based on uh, the movie A Quiet Place. Oh! I mean, same thing, right? No. Well, it does no. have mic integration, it, uh, there's a whole bunch of other ways you can make noise. Yeah, yeah. But so just stepping yeah. on dry leaves or glass or rocks or anything that isn't sand, pretty much. Sand is the only safe spot. <laughs> it pretty much is. Yikes. Also, of course, the character you're playing as is asthmatic. Oh, of course. <laughs> so you gotta make sure that your uh, uh, lung level is all right. <laughs> you gotta collect lung inhalers level. throughout the game. Huh? You have to collect inhalers throughout the game. <laughs> oh, those are the collectibles. No, those are those are like the health items, pretty much. Oh, I see. 
It's like if the SCP game you had to collect like eye drops or some shit. <laughs> also, kind of a spoiler. She's pregnant as well. Oh. Yeah. I've well, always wanted like, to play Pregnancy Simulator. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> you play as a present pregnant asthmatic when in a game where you cannot make noise. That's a that's a pretty terrible combination of, of events. <laughs> yep. So let me just take the time to appreciate what I just did there. I was initially on the death route platform. Then I said, wait a minute, I don't have to do that. So I killed myself, went on the normal pathway, broke all the boxes, and then backtracked around to the death route, the end of the death route, and broke the only two boxes that were there. Oh, and then you, died. Just, you don't even have to do the death route? <laughs> nope. <laughs> wow. So I'd rather do it like that. Then have to go through the death route and then backtrack through the normal pathway. I mean, that makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Cool. I've never seen a quiet place. Neither have I. <laughs> I th I think I can't remember when I saw, but I th I, th I think all I've seen of uh, I might have seen of a quiet place was some video that's one of, that's like one of those channels that's just like could you survive like this movie or whatever. I, I watched <laughs> yeah. the kill count video of it. Oh yeah, and its sequel. How many people die? I don't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> 